at some point you're going to have to answer the question, what happens when you need to borrow with fractions? But before we answer that question, let me ask you this. What would you do if you wanted something from this vending machine, but all you had was a $5 bill and everything in the vending machine is $1.25. What would you do? Would you trade your $5 bill in for a five ones? Is that what most of you said you would do? You can go get change, right? You can trade it. You can give your $5 bill to somebody who has five $1 bills. And then you could trade one of those $1 bills for four quarters. Now you have four $1 bills and four quarters. Still the same amount, it has a value of $5, but in a more useful form. You always had enough money to get something out of the vending machine. It just wasn't in a useful form. It wasn't the form that you needed. So you can trade it in, trade in your $5 bill for the same amount of money in a more useful form. Now you can enjoy. Thank goodness, because learning math makes me so thirsty. Hey, who did that? Oh, so refreshing. Believe it or not, we can do the same thing with fractions. Sometimes with mixed numbers, we have the same issue. We have enough to subtract, like this fraction, eight and two fifths is more than six and four fifths. So we can subtract, but we learned from the other video when we subtract whole numbers, we wanna subtract the fractions first and then the whole numbers. And when we get started, we see we've got two fifths minus four fifths. Well, we can't do that. Two fifths is not enough um, to subtract four fifths from. We're gonna have to borrow, just like you do with whole numbers. We'll go next door, we'll borrow from the eight, make it a seven, and we're gonna borrow one whole from there because, but our problem is we don't have enough fifths. We only have two fifths, we need more. So we're gonna trade our one whole in for fifths. One whole is five fifths, and that's what we need. Our problem was, our issue was we needed more fifths. So we're gonna trade our one whole in for fifths. One whole is five fifths. And then we can take those five fifths and put them right over here with the two fifths. Two fifths plus five more will give us seven fifths. Now we can subtract, we have enough. Seven fifths minus four fifths is three fifths. Seven minus six equals one. Eight and two fifths minus six and four fifths is one and three fifths. That's how we borrow with mixed numbers when we're subtracting. We trade them in for whatever fraction we need. Let's try it with this one. We have 18 and one third minus 11 and two thirds. That should work. If I have over 18, I can certainly subtract a little over 11 from there, but when I start, start to subtract and start on the fraction side, I see I've got one third minus two thirds. So I have enough, but it must not be in the right form that I need. So we're gonna trade it in. We're gonna go next door and borrow, just like we would with whole numbers. I'm gonna borrow from the 18, that'll be 17. But this time our problem is we don't have enough thirds. So we're gonna borrow one from next door, but we're going to change it into thirds. So one, is the same thing as three thirds. Instead of calling it one, we're gonna call it three thirds because that's our problem. That's what we need. We need more thirds. And then we can put those three thirds with the one third we already had. Three thirds plus that one third is going to give us four thirds. Now that we're done trading, we can subtract. I now have enough thirds to subtract. Four thirds minus two thirds is two thirds and 17 minus 11 is six.
That's how we subtract when we need to borrow. We trade it in for whatever fraction we need. It gets a little tricky, sometimes. But you'll get the hang of it. Just hang in there. We'll keep working on it, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>